on to function composition. Now, we'll talk about how to do function composition in a second, but I do want to note first this right here. There are two ways to write function composition, just like there was with addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. I personally will prefer this way, and I'll show you why in just a second, but they mean the same thing, so if you see them, know that they're the same. So let's try some function composition. Here I have example six. I am going to rewrite this in the form that I like it as, like that. And here's how we do function composition. You remember how we talked about whatever's inside goes inside the big fat parentheses? Well, that is still true. So you're going to start by taking this outside function, the g, and that is the function that you're doing the big fat parentheses with. So I come up here to g, and I'm going to have 1 over, there's an x, so big fat parentheses, minus 1. So there's my g of x, the outside function, but with my big fat parentheses. And what do we plug in? Well, whatever is inside. So in this case, what is inside is f of x. So I come up here to f of x. There's my f of x equation 2x plus 3. So that is what I plug in inside. So the inside function still goes inside your big fat parentheses. The outside function is the one that you make the big fat parentheses with. So if I simplify this out, I have 1 over 2x plus 3 minus 1, which I can simplify to 1 over 2x plus 2. Ta-da! Okay, let's try one more before you practice. This one is f of g of x. So remember, the outside function, that's the one I start with to do my big fat parentheses with. So now I start with f. So here's my f equation. Anywhere I see an x, I do my big fat parentheses. What do I plug into those parentheses? Well, whatever is inside. So in this case, g. So I come up here, there's my g. So that is what I'm going to plug in inside because that is the equation for g. And same as last time, we simplify. This is 2 over x minus 1 plus 3, which we can just leave like that. We only have to simplify it when it's fractions inside fractions. Other than that, you're fine. So having practiced this a little bit, I would like you to try example c and d. Remember to rewrite them so it's a little easier to see what is the outside function. So what's the one that gets the big parentheses? And what is the inside function, which is what you plug in to those big parentheses? So pause the video and try that out on your own. Let's see how you did. So here my h function is, we come up here, whoa, too far, right here, square root of x plus 4. So that is where my big fat parentheses go. So square root of x, my big fat parentheses, plus 4. f is the function that I'm plugging inside, and then I simplify it to get that. Here we have f of f of x, where f is 2x plus 3, so 2 big fat parentheses plus 3, but I'm also plugging that same equation inside it, 2x plus 3. So then I distribute and simplify to get 4x plus 9. Okay, I want you to pause the video and try this on one more. So g of g of x. So you're plugging g of x into g of x. So once again, don't forget your inside and, or sorry, your outside and your inside. And pause the video and ready, set, go. This is what you should end up with right here. So I plugged, I had started with my g, 1 over x, there's my big fat parentheses, minus 1. 
and then plug the same equation inside it, 1 over x minus 1. Now, we will want to simplify this. If you already did, fantastic, that's awesome. But we have a fraction in a fraction, which means we've got to simplify. So the way to do that is with your common denominator. So I'm going to times this 1 by x minus 1 over x minus 1. So then I've got my common denominator going on right there. And I can do this as 1 over, this is going to be 1 minus the x minus 1. If I distribute that 1, it doesn't really change it. All over my common denominator. Let's distribute that negative, so we get 1 minus x plus 1, and that's going to be minus x plus 2. And now, because we've combined them together and simplified, we can do keep, switch, flip. So keep the numerator, keep that 1, switch to multiplying, and flip the denominator. So that gives us that. There we go. Okay, let's do one more function composition, and then in the next video we'll move on to finding the domain of composed functions. This one, let's start together, because this is our first one where we have three things going on here. So we basically want to plug f into g into h. Wow. So let's take this one step at a time. h is still our outside function. So I'm going to start with h and do my big fat parentheses. So my h function was the square root of x plus 4. And my big fat parentheses were my x's. Now the next layer I want to plug g in, but g is not my final function, so I still want to do big fat parentheses anywhere g has an x. So I'm going to do g next, g is 1 over x, big fat parentheses for that x, or sorry, minus 1. Now I can do my inside so my f equation goes in the innermost parentheses, so there's my 2x plus 3. So you'll see I have f inside of g, which is inside of h. So if I go to simplify all this, I get 1 over 2x plus 3 minus 1 is 2x plus 2 plus 4, which we can leave. We only need to simplify fractions and in fractions. So that is function composition, my friends. In the next video, we're going to talk about how to find domain of these composed functions.